Okay, guys, uh, this is the last section I'm going to teach. Uh, I'm doing this uh, together with honors and regular government. Uh, I really like these notes and uh, don't like my regular notes so much. Uh, it has to look a little different for you guys, but um, this is the judicial branch and kind of what I find is probably the branch that uh, students know the least about. Uh, everybody knows a little bit about the president and the cabinet and that sort of thing and uh, obviously the legislative branch with laws and that sort of thing. So um, I'm going to, this will be a pretty short video, just kind of get things started. Um, and then we'll have a test. Yeah, I'll do some lectures this week. We'll have a test next week and wrap things up. Okay. Um, so section six for, um, for uh, honors uh, and for uh, regulars, this is uh, like chapter uh, eight. Um, so um, let's just get started here. Okay, so you look at the court system. Um, we're going to look at jurisdiction. That means which court gets to hear which cases. Okay, uh, we'll look at the Supreme Court and then I'll really dig into our rights, our civil liberties, which are our freedoms and our rights. Uh, this is pretty good stuff. And then the nine steps of a trial uh, and uh, or the nine steps of, you know, an arrest to a trial and that sort of thing, which is uh, honor students, that's in your book, uh, and um, so it's also in these notes as well, so you don't have to worry too much about that. Okay, so today to start, we're going to look at what's known as a dual court system, okay? Uh, the state courts are separate from the federal courts, okay? Most trials are going to occur in the state courts, and there is a diagram in the book uh, for this, but I have one myself. Uh, to make things a lot more simple here, okay? So uh, if you look at this, guys, um, the federal courts and then the state courts, okay? There's state over here, okay? Try to figure out how to best. Yeah, all right, there's pretty good, okay? So if you look at the federal courts, start with that, okay? You've got one Supreme Court, nine justices, okay? Then you have 13 circuit courts of appeals. Now, the circuit courts of appeals are divided amongst the states or you know geographically uh, around the um, United States okay so let me pull up a map of that um, so 13 circuit courts yeah there you go and then we'll bring up a map uh, do images okay yeah, this is pretty good right here, guys. Um, so, extend that out. Okay, so we live, Kansas, in the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals, okay? And this is the Ninth Circuit out here, and I'll be referring to the Ninth Circuit from time to time. Um, and then there's one circuit uh, for the uh, Washington, D.C. area, okay? Um and that's the 13th circuit, okay? So, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, so you got the D.C. circuit and then the D.C. Supreme Court, okay? Uh, so it's divided up into 13, okay? This one kind of shows that again, okay? 13 circuits, okay? All right, where'd my notes go? Um, sorry. Let's close that. Okay. All right. So um, back to this. Okay. So you get now there's 24 judges on each one of these, these circuits. Okay. Over here. There's my hand. There it is. Okay. 24 judges. And they hear cases in uh, groups of three of those 24 will hear a case. And then if you look at the bottom here, you have 94 federal district courts. Okay. And these are 94 of the largest cities uh, in the United States, okay? Now, only 5% of cases, as you see here at the bottom, are federal cases. And I'll be talking about federal jurisdiction and what that means, okay? Now, if you go to the states, since states are different, right? Each state is different. There's 50 different state Supreme Courts, okay? Uh, ours has... Uh, I believe nine on it in Kansas, okay? And then each state has courts of appeal, okay? 
And then this is where 95% of cases take place, is down here. Municipal courts would be like the city of Wichita. They're city courts. And then you have county courts. So if you get busted by the Wichita Police Department, you go to municipal court. You get busted by the county sheriff, you go to county court. Okay, then you see divorce court, juvenile court, traffic courts, small claim courts, like you'll see that on TV, Judge Judy, and that sort of thing. Okay, so this, guys, is a dual court system, federal and state. Okay, so we'll be talking about how, which cases become federal and which ones are state and local based on who's involved and what the crime is, okay? So um, the appointment of judges, we know about this already from our earlier study. Federal judges are appointed by the president and approved by whom? The Senate, that's right. Okay, so if you go back to things like Judge Kavanaugh, who's on the Supreme Court, there's a big fight over that. You got the whole uh, uh, sexual uh, assault charges that... Um, this woman brought against him and so forth. And you're seeing uh, Joe Biden uh, kind of go through some of that right now as well. Okay. Um, so uh, state judges, okay, so state Supreme Court judges and appellate judges, okay, are appointed by the governor, approved by the state legislature, and retained by the vote of the people. Now, because each state is different, guys, there's going to be a little bit different process. So I can speak to Kansas, okay? So with Kansas, um, the governor gets to select them, but it, the governor, she, Kelly, gets to select from a group of judges that the Kansas Bar Association recommends. So they recommend, you know, a handful of judges. If there's a vacancy, she chooses from that group, and then they go to the Supreme Court, okay? And they do not serve for life, okay? They serve at the will of the people. So uh, every, I think it's four years, a Kansas Supreme Court justice will go on the ballot. So when you go to vote in November, there'll be a choice. Do you want to retain this judge? Yes or no. Okay. Most of these judges get retained, you know, and stay on the court for a long period of time. Um, there was a while back, guys, the Kansas Supreme Court's a pretty liberal, and you guys kind of know what that means, right? So um, when the uh, Carr brothers, and I think I've talked about the Carr brothers in class before and what happened with that crime here in Wichita, um, they were convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to death in the state of Kansas, okay? Now, because uh, it's a death penalty case, in all cases you can appeal, but with death, death penalty cases you can appeal over and over again. Uh, there's a long process. They want to make sure you get it right. And so um, the Carr brothers' attorneys uh, appealed the death penalty conviction based on the fact that the two brothers were sentenced and tried together. And they said, well, one brother was kind of more in charge than the other in the murder of these four people. Um, they should have been tried separately and sentenced separately. And this, you, uh, the Kansas Supreme Court bought that decision. They agreed with their lawyers, and they overturned the death penalty. Now, they're still convicted, but no longer under the death penalty. Well, the state of Kansas, Attorney General at the time, didn't like that. And so he appealed, where? To the United States Supreme Court, okay? So these guys were tried, okay, in Wichita, uh, municipal court. They were found guilty, death penalty, okay? They appeal to the state here. They win this case. It goes to Kansas Supreme Court. They win that case, get the death penalty thrown out, and then the state of Kansas sues, appeals to the U.S. Supreme Court. And they found 9-0 that the Kansas Supreme Court was wrong. And they overturned that decision and reinstated the death penalty on the Carr brothers. Okay, so that's just kind of one example. Now, there was an attempt uh, by many in this state, including me, um, to when a couple of those judges on the Kansas Supreme Court came up for retention, there was kind of this movement to get them replaced. Um, 
to say, no, we don't want to retain them. Well, that failed. Okay, now, if you were taking the votes down here in Wichita, Cedric County, uh, there were a lot of people that heard about it and said, no, we don't want to retain these. But up in the Kansas City area, uh, people, I don't know if they weren't aware or they liked the decision that the Kansas Supreme Court had made, and they were retained. They did not lose their job. Okay, local judges are elected, just like members of Congress. Now, in some states, judges run as Republicans or Democrats. In some states, they don't put what party they belong to. They're just running for judge. Okay. I kind of like that they run as Republicans or Democrats because in Kansas because you kind of get a, an idea of how these people think, right? I mean, if you tell me you're a, a socialist liberal, well, then I can kind of figure out how you think about things, right? If I tell you I'm a right-wing conservative, you can kind of figure out how I think about things, okay? So if you're a Republican or Democrat, you can kind of figure that out. And so I kind of like that uh, when you get to elect these local judges. And they serve terms. Uh, so they come up for, for retention as well or re-election, okay? Now, uh, federal judges are appointed for life, okay? So if you're a Supreme Court judge or one of these uh, other federal judges that sit on the appeals court or the district courts, once you're appointed, guys, the president that appointed you has no power over you. Once you get confirmed by the Senate, so that frees you to make whatever decisions you think are right with the law and the Constitution. And that kind of gives the judicial branch its independence from the other two branches. Okay, A lot of people like that. Um, although sometimes you get bad judges and you'd like, let's get rid of this person. They're an idiot. You know, let me give you an example. I mean, let's say, you know, a, a two-year-old child is raped. And, and, and a judge gives this individual like a, you know, a six-month sentence. You're like... What is going on here? Okay, can we get rid of this judge? And the answer is no, if they're a federal judge. Um, if it's a state or local judge, you might be able to get rid of them. You can't impeach judges for dumb decisions. Okay, and that can be frustrating. Okay, but their independence here is important. They can resign, retire, or die. They can be impeached. Okay, just like, just like the president or the vice president. Uh, same type of process we saw with President Trump, where the House brings up impeachment uh, charges, and then it goes over to the Senate for conviction. Okay, so you'd have a jury trial there. Now, obviously, if there was a Supreme Court judge or a federal ju uh, justice um, up for impeachment, unlike in the Trump impeachment, you wouldn't have the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court as the judge. The vice president would be the judge if you're impeaching a judge. <laughs> okay, so you can impeach them, but that same thing with the president. It's for high crimes and misdemeanors. They commit a serious crime, you can impeach them. Can't impeach them because you don't like them. Okay, like the Democrats kind of, kind of do. I mean, let's be serious, all right? Supreme Court judges are paid $244,400 a year. Okay, pretty good, pretty good, and you're for life, you know? So you're kind of set there. Um, now, what do these people do? Well, they read and they write. That's what judges do. They read and they write and they make decisions, okay? Uh, it could be kind of a tough life. I mean, you're getting cases in front of you um, most of the year. You do get a little bit of a vacation, um, but, you know, it can be tough on you. Um, but most of these people are really smart and they like to read and write. <laughs> Okay, so, um, all right, so there are court officers. So if you walk into any courtroom, guys, you're going to see this. Uh, you're going to see a judge, a clerk, okay? That's the, uh, sorry, the assistant to the judge that helps the jury with instructions and that sort of thing, kind of keeps everything in order. Uh, the bailiff, which is the police officer in the room. And then you have a stenographer uh, that types everything that is said during the the trial, the, you know, the hearing, all that, okay? Um, and they're in charge of the evidence as well. They'll swear you in um, as well, okay? All right, so before I get too long-winded, I want to get into jurisdiction, okay? And we'll stop here, okay? So, guys, this is important to understand our system, okay? You have what's called original jurisdiction, okay? The court 
that's going to hear a case first, okay? Um, these are typically called trial courts, okay? Trier of fact, okay? So if you look at this again, okay, the bottom courts on both sides are the trier of fact, okay? They want to hear the evidence. They're going to hear the lawyers argue. Is this person guilty? Is this person uh, innocent? Okay. Um, so what determines which court hears the original case? This is where we're going to get into whether it's federal or state situation. Okay. Whoa. Okay. So the subject matter, what's the case about and the parties involved? Okay. Now I'm going to get into that down here. Okay. Appellate jurisdiction. Okay. Here's a case on appeal. Okay. These are triers of law. Trier of fact, trier of law. Okay. So if you are tried, okay, let's say you rob a convenience store with a gun. Okay. So armed robbery. Right, so there's the, the subject matter, armed robbery, the party involved is you, okay? That's gonna be done at the local level, local and state level, okay? All right, now, if you're convicted and you're guilty, found guilty by a jury, you can appeal that decision, okay, from the lower court where it was tried. Following me, okay? You have the right to have your case heard at this level. Everybody can appeal. Now, do they have to hear your appeal? Well, yes, but no. They may not go through the whole process, okay? So this is called trier of law. Now, what they're going to be looking at here, guys, you've all heard this. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed to you, okay? And this is where people that are poor, that cannot afford a good attorney, are going to have one appointed for them by the state. Those people call are called public defenders. That's their job, is to defend people that cannot afford an attorney. Now, these are going to be your best lawyers in the country, the bus, best lawyers in your city? Probably not. Now, they probably have some experience, although a lot of times these are people, can be people right out of law school. Okay, so you may not get the best defense. Well, let's say during your trial, your court-appointed attorney falls asleep during the trial and you can document this and so you appeal saying you did not you did not get adequate representation in your trial by the government they're looking at the 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 trial did they admit evidence that was found illegally by police that's what they're going to look at they're going to look at the the trial not the facts not whether you're guilty or innocent, whether you got a fair trial, whether you had an impartial jury, these sorts of things, okay? Whether you had adequate representation. Did the judge do their job correctly? Did the, draw, did the judge not allow evidence in that you wanted in? Was it fair? Okay, so they're looking at the law not as whether you're guilty or innocent. Did you receive a fair trial? That's what appeals are all about. So when I talked about the circuit courts, okay, uh, over here, yeah, these 13 circuit courts, you'll have three judges look at the trier of law, not at the facts that were figured out down here, okay, but at the trial. Okay, I don't want to beat that with a dead horse, okay? Hopefully you understand that, okay? All right, so only 5% of cases are federal, and here's what makes them federal. The subject matter, remember, and the parties involved, the subject matter for it to be a federal case. Interpretation of the Constitution or a federal law, okay, anything done in U.S. waters, the subject matter there is it makes it a federal case, okay? And then parties involved, if the U.S. government or any agency, if you're suing the U.S. government, or the U.S. government did something wrong to you, okay? If an ambassador or any representative of foreign countries involved, if one state is suing another, it's going to be a federal case. They'll play referee. 
And if someone from one state is suing someone from another state. Now, I told you guys earlier with the 11th Amendment, if you want to sue somebody from another state, you have to do it in their state, okay? But you could set that up possibly as a federal case, okay? It, it just depends, all right? So, um, let me give you some examples here, okay? Um, so, let's say you rob a bank, okay? The bank is part of the Federal Reserve System, okay? And the Federal Reserve is part of the federal government. Okay, so you rob a bank, it's a federal crime. You assault a postal worker or an IRS agent while they're trying to do their job. Okay, that's a federal case. Okay, party parties involved. All right. Um, interpretation of the Constitution or federal law. Now, this means civil rights cases, guys. So um, if you've been denied your civil rights, uh, discrimination, uh, over uh, like voting say they say well you're black we don't want you to vote okay that's civil rights case uh, that's that can be a federal uh, lawsuit okay um, so anything involving the Constitution so laws um, so uh, let's look like say take Brown versus Board of Education where Brown was the father of three uh, schoolgirls in um, in Topeka, Kansas, and he knew that they were not getting a separate but equal education at those two different schools that were segregated. Okay, that is a violation of their civil rights when it comes to the 14th Amendment, equal protection under the law. Okay, so that becomes a federal case. Okay, <coughs> all right, so I uh, kind of threw quite a bit at you there with the first part here. We're going to dig into the Supreme Court look at different cases and how, how the process works, okay, then get into some really good stuff on uh, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, due process, and then how uh, an arrest takes place and how they can search you, really some Fourth Amendment stuff and that sort of thing. So I uh, hope you're looking forward to this, guys. Uh, uh, and uh, this is it for us, uh, the judicial branch, okay? So have a good one. Talk to you later.